coming up on this episode of Murphy Set Wild Underwater Adventures. It's been a long day, but we're checking out another creek to see if we can find some of the ornate rainbow fish or even some of the honey blue eyes. They're really rare and really hard to find. Um, they tend to live in tannin stained water surrounded by tea trees, so let's go and see if we can find some. Under the surface wasn't the ornate rainbow fish, but we were lucky enough to find some crimson spotted rainbow fish schooling together in the shallow creek next to the road. The visibility of the water wasn't very good, but the fish seem to manage just fine with those big black eyes. They can easily navigate through murky water and find any insects or mosquitoes landing on the surface, which make up the majority of their diets. After this excellent start to the day, we decided to continue on our journey, which involved going down a lot of dirt roads in the forest, but eventually we reached the next creek. This next creek wasn't flowing, but it did have some interesting creatures living in it. It's hard to see, but there is, in fact, a little native Cherax crayfish searching through the leaves for some food. They enjoy plant matter, algae, and just about anything else that falls to the riverbed. While schooling above them, we see some more crimson spotted rainbow fish and the occasional baby purple spotted gudgeon. There are some particularly beautiful male crimson spotted rainbows here. The males are the bigger rainbows with the more colourful bodies, who were very curious and like to investigate my camera, which I'm guessing they had never seen before. But after this amazing encounter, it was time to move on. We arrived at this small lake which had two species of water lilies, the larger ones are a potentially very rare native species called Nymphaea gigantea, but are more likely to be the African blue water lily, whereas the smaller ones are a native water lily called a water snowflake. They get this name because of their delicate white flowers which resemble snowflakes. And under the surface were even more crimson spotted rainbow fish. This was a very large school of them and a great find, but we had another river to investigate so we disappeared off before the sun set. We went down one of the bumpiest and most uncomfortable roads I have ever been down, but it was the perfect environment to find the ornate rainbow fish and honey blue eyes. And upon crossing a river, we decided to pull over to investigate. This tannin stained water, although didn't look very nice from above, below the surface were many signs of life. Unfortunately, due to the fading light, it was incredibly hard to make out any fish living here. But there were definitely some type of gudgeons and rainbow fish swimming around in this creek. I'm unable to say if they are the ornate rainbow fish or not, but it was a good sign finding these fish up this remote, poorly maintained road. We were stopped in the middle of the road by some native top-notch pigeons, otherwise known as the crested pigeon, due to their hat feathers sticking up. We couldn't get close enough to get a good look at them, as the moment I got out of the car they flew off. But they are still a wonderful creature to encounter. This old building is from a logger, who removed many many trees from this area, so the government decided to maintain it as a historical attraction. It's known as Harry's Hut. This area is actually one of only two Everglades in the world. You may know of the Florida Everglades, but these are the Noosa Everglades, home to over 40% of Australia's bird species. This intricate network of rivers 
provide a sanctuary to countless native creatures and plants, including many native fish. But once again, we were cursed by the fading sunlight and only got a glimpse at some species of gudgeons and rainbows. And on the way back to camp, we saw a flock of cockatoos on some lucky person's front yard. It's fairly late in the evening, and I'm just walking around the campsite, trying to have a look at what creatures live out here after dark. Hopefully we can find something. It's really cold and really windy, but I'm confident we might be able to track something down living maybe in the trees or down on the ground. So let's have a look at what we can find. Anything out here should show up and fluoresce just like my teeth are at the moment because of the special wavelength of light that this torch uses. So let's go and see what we can find. I was unsuccessful in finding any creatures around the campsite at night. I did find this creepy tunnel though. It dropped in temperature quite a lot overnight and it is really cold. You can see your breath when you breathe out. That's first thing in the morning and I thought I'd go and have a look and see if any creatures are up and out and moving. So let's go, go and have a look in the creek and on the trails and see if we can find anything. Amazingly, even though it's this cold and early in the morning, the fish are still out and moving around. So are the insects. Every time I put my hand in the water and have to touch it, they, they get really, really cold. They hurt and go numb. But the fish are coping fine. In this chilly water, the crimson spotted rainbow fish and blue eyes were waking up and getting ready for their morning insect feast. This morning, I woke up to a tick on my wrist, right here. And who knows how long that had been on there, probably all night, with my wrist up against my face, so I had a horrible tick hanging out in front of my face all night. Yes, yeah, so that wasn't a great start to the day, but at least I've removed it now. We can move on, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately ticks can make you allergic to all beef products um, and they can if left on long enough cause paralysis so thankfully I got that off pretty swift well relatively swiftly it takes a few days for the paralysis to work oh yeah but they they are horrible <laughs> I do not do not like ticks The surrounding forest was magical. All of these trees and the vines in the early morning sunlight made for such a beautiful environment. And zoom goes the scrub turkey past my camera. I got really lucky on the way back to my tent. We saw that turkey plus another native bird hopping about in the trees above me. I rarely get a good look at birds because my camera doesn't have a zoom setting, so seeing this one was really special. I haven't seen this species before and couldn't get a good enough look at it to identify them. Maybe if you know what species this little bird is, please leave a comment and let me know. I can hear something moving in the bush. Let's have a look at what it is. It's 
a goanna. Aren't they an awesome creature with those big claws, perfect for climbing up trees and defending themselves. They also got a nice sharp set of teeth on them, so you don't want to annoy them, but they're not very aggressive. They're quite gentle creatures. You just gotta keep your distance. You can see with that one, even when I tried to get anywhere near it, they ended up walking away. Still, what a cool find. I just spotted something. That looks a lot like a cane toad, which are an invasive species. They outcompete the native frogs and toads and really decimate the populations of any animals that try and eat them. They're really common all throughout Australia. There's only a few pockets where they aren't found. And obviously they've made it to this park as well. You can tell the difference between cane toads and our normal toads because they have those distinct ridges on their head. It looks like something's wrong with this one. doesn't look like he can hop properly. I wonder what's happened to him. Even though they're invasive and they unfortunately destroy millions of our native wildlife, I, I still feel bad for them. It's not their fault they're here. Well, it's time to end our journey now, but I hope you enjoyed seeing all these creatures in their natural habitat and learning about how they live and the environment in which they live in. I'll catch you on our next adventure, and until then, keep it murky.